Hey guys, welcome back to the vlog. Um, today there's not a whole lot going on. I have to move around some of the males in, uh, you know, with their new females for the breeding week. And Minnie here, um, my Brazilian rainbow boa just shed. So I need to sanitize kind of half her enclosure because I clean this half, uh, you know, I clean, I spot clean as needed. This side has already been cleaned. Um, she spends like 90% of her time either next to this side of the hide or inside the hide. Um, and with rainbow boas, um, as some of you might know, they definitely have higher humidity requirements. So that's kind of a more humid hide for her. Um, I keep sphagnum moss in there and that's actually where she usually ends up defecating um, and shedding. So what we need to do is I'm going to pull her out and then we are going to um, clean that side of the tub and sanitize it. So she likes to wedge herself everywhere. No, 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 don't run back there. Come here. Come on. All right. All right, let me pull her out this way. Um, I don't know if you, any of you guys have rainbow boas, um, but they definitely like to wrap themselves around things a lot more than like ball pythons do. Um, this is a nice shed back there because it is super, super humid back there. She's getting really big. She's really pretty. Um, she's almost about two years old. Um, no, she is two years old. So I got her in June, you know, two years back when she was already like maybe three, four months old. Um, and as you can see, she is a big, healthy looking, beautiful rainbow boa. And actually, um, you know, I got the mail last week, two weeks ago. Let me show you kind of the difference here between how, look how, oops, I'm gonna run away. I wanna show you the difference in color. Um, you know, here's Minnie. That's how bright she is. And look how dark he is. Beautiful snakes, both in their own right, but they look almost like the two completely different types. She's like a really high red, high orange, and he's really almost like a brown color. So I'm curious here, um, you know, later this summer, what, you know, I'm able to breed them together and curious to see kind of what comes out of that combo. Um, I am just going to put her in this tub temporarily right here while I clean out her enclosure. All right, so the basic cleaning procedure, um, you know, for, for anything, whether it's a tub or, um, you know, a bigger enclosure, obviously, is to get out. It's a nice shed. <laughs> it's a very nice shed. Um, anyways, um, you know, you want to take out all the substrate. Um, actually, I'm going to get a glove on because pretty sure there's poop in there somewhere and when you're when there's poop in there um especially when it's in one of these you know her human hide it's kind of nasty and i don't really feel like bare handing that um so i'm basically going to take everything out from this side over and just throw it out um and as you can see like i said i do mix sphagnum moss in with her humid hide so it stays a little more humid in there. She can choose to go in and out of there if she wants to. And that'll, that allows her to self-regulate that by herself. Um, for, you know, from my research, from when I had her, I guess some of the care care issues people have with rainbow bows when they're hatchlings is they they can't really take too much of a fluctuation in their humidity. It needs to remain pretty high. Um, so it's very imperative that you have a humid hide for that, for that hatchling. 
to retreat into when it requires it. Um, you know, that keeps them happy, keeps them healthy, and keeps them alive. I think a lot of the issues people see when they have rainbow boas and as babies and they don't stay healthy is because they're not giving them that humid hide to, to sleep in. So uh, make sure you provide that for them. I've never had any health issues with her. Um, she's never even bit me. She's never struck at me. She has excellent temperament. Um, I'm curious, you know, if you watch the other vlog when I unboxed that mail, he struck at me the first, or struck at the camera the first time I even took him out. So I'm hoping that, you know, that was more of a stress thing than an attitude thing. Rainbow boas do have a reputation for being sort of bitey. Um, and nippy especially as, as hatchlings more so but she's actually she never never displayed any of that um so i don't know if i just got lucky with her or if you know some of the uh the rumors are not true um then i have my f10 mixture i'm gonna spray it down really well It's okay if that F10 gets on the other substrate. It's not going to hurt them. You know, I don't want to spray it down. I don't want to soak any of the stuff I'm keeping there in F10. Um, but it's it's not going to harm her at all. Really clean it. Down, wipe it down in there. Um, typically, you know, whether it's, whether you're in a rack system or, um, you know, in one of these bigger enclosures for your animals, you really, at least with snakes, um, you want to do a full substrate clean out probably once a month or, you know, when they shed, because usually when they shed, it's usually when they, when they poop, um, that's usually a good time to just kind of clean out all the substrate give it a good you know wiping down with f10 sanitize everything and then put brand new substrate in there um you know between those severe cleanings really all you need to do is kind of pick up the urates and pick up the poops where they happen um you know if you have to take a big chunk of the substrate out just put down some new substrate where that was um and then you are uh, good to go all right, so now you just put the substrate back in. You know, I have my Repti chip already uh, mixed up. I usually have a bin at all times, kind of pre-prepared so that I don't have to have to uh, mix it up on spot. Um, and with hers, again, once she's or since she needs a little more humidity, after I'm done putting the Repti chip in, I will. Get a little sphagnum moss, mix it in there under her hide. That's like enough of that. Um, sphagnum moss. If you guys have never seen it, it's just really dried out. It's a, it's a certain type of moss, but it's really dried out. Um, and if you add water to it, um, it's real dry and flaky when you first open it. Um, but when you add water to it, it really holds in moisture pretty well. So I'll sprinkle that into where her hide is going to be just to provide a little extra humidity. And then I will I already clean the water bowl in her hide. So what I'm going to do is just dump a little bit of, dump it this way so you can see, just a little bit just to kind of lubricate the moss make it a little more wet in this side and then put the hide back in place get it settled in there and then I'm actually going to fill up her water bowl again because I just almost emptied it all out right there alright so we got finished cleaning and setting up the cage um, you know it's definitely Looks a lot cleaner and a lot drier from when she uh, tips over a water bowl. And, um, so we're nice and clean. And we will go back over here and 
get her out of her holding tub. Oop. There she is. Yeah, baby. She's actually probably ready to eat too. Look, look her. she loves to coil up. Um, it's so different than holding the ball python because they usually don't wrap, wrap around you at all. Um, actually, I had her out a couple days ago and I was just trying to double check her gender before I um, bought the mail and I had her sitting up here and I was trying to, to sex her and she was obviously trying to run away and she kept running down the side of my cart here and she actually wedged herself up underneath that wheel there and coiled around it and I couldn't pull her off because she was on there so tight so I had to kind of like tickle her like this on her belly to get her to kind of unwind and start rolling around so she uh she's awesome i love her she's she's so, i'm so glad i got her at such a young age um she's an awesome snake and you can even start you can see some of that rainbow in there so let me get her back in there she should go right back in her hide she zips in there usually what she does is she flies back in there and then she'll poke her head back out this end once she gets all the way in yep there she is <laughs> right on cue hi baby i think you're gonna eat probably a little later today actually i might even show you guys that too so while i'm thawing out her rat um the other thing i have to do is to move the males around with the other females the ball pythons um so we can start doing that now Let's see, this is Danky King and Annie, and they are locked up. Uh, so that's a good sign. Again, just so you guys know, that's what a lock looks like. Their their tails are intertwined and their vents are kind of lined up. Um, so with these two, he's a banana super inchy fire and she's a lemon blast, which is a pastel pinstripe. Um, everything is going to come out at least single gene inchy. Um, what I'd like to hit is a banana enchi lemon blast, I guess. If we can hit fire in there, that'd be fantastic. Um, but I really like bananas when they come out like him and there's not a whole lot of freckling. Um, and it keeps the color really well too. Uh, if you get like a single gene banana, they start off really bright and really yellow, but they really dull out over the course of their lives and they get all the, the banana spots. Whereas, I mean, he's two years old at this point um and he is still like super bright yellow and that's a lot of due to the super inchy in the fire um but if i can get anything close to that again with him um that would be fantastic and i really don't know you know um, typically if you don't know about bananas they are usually either male makers or female makers um and i can explain that to you here in a second shredder who is my Super Mojave Banana Male, who is, well, he's locked up right now with my Super Pastel Super Butter. Um, so he is a male maker banana, which means every single male offspring that he has will be a banana. Um, and they have female makers as well, whereas every banana that comes out of the clutch is a, uh, every female will be a banana. And on the opposite side of it, um, every female that comes out at one of his clutches should not be a banana. Um, so it kind of gives you like a 50-50 chance you're having a banana and a 50-50 chance of getting males and females out of it. So they're locked up and they're locked up, so I'm not going to move them. Let me see if Tesla... Oh, Tesla's locked up to Princess too. So that's good. Maddie, are they cute? Yeah, they're cute. Um... Say hi. Hi. No, say hi to the camera. Hi, camera. <laughs> say hi, YouTube. Hi, YouTube. <laughs> um, so these two look very similar. Um, she's a mystic potion and he's a purple passion. Um, they both have Mojave, um, but she's mystic and he's phantom. Um, she also has pastel and he also has leopard and blackhead. Um, so, you know, hopefully... We don't get any super Mojaves out of there because they'll be yeah, a, skink. a skink out. Yeah. Wow. Hopefully we don't get any super Mojaves out of that combo because the snakes will be all white. So we're looking for 
um, Phantom Mystics or more Purple Passions or more Mystic Potions so we can see how Pastel, Black Head and Leopard uh, work into those other genes. Um, so the next ones here are my Ivories, my Leopard and my Enchi Ivory. And they are not paired up at all. She's actually going in the shed. <clears throat> Yay. So that might be why they are not locking up. So what I'm going to do is move him, he's a leopard ivory, over with my yellow belly, bright female. And she's hugging the bowl and sitting in it, so that's a fantastic sign. Um, bright is just another line of fire, really. So if you want to consider her fire. So what I'm lo really looking for here is with all of his pairings or just to make more ivory leopards. Um, and if the bright jeans in there as well, then that'd be another plus. So as you can see with her, her eyes are very cloudy and she's very pink. When these white snakes, whether they're black eye Lucy's, which is what an ivory is, or a blue eye Lucy, um, their eyes turn very cloudy and their skin almost turns pink um, because they're white when they go in the shed. Um, these two are not locked up and she's in the water bowl. so. That it doesn't help us a whole lot. So let me pull him out and slide him over into the next super inchy female. She's in the water, which is a good sign. They've been locking up pretty frequently here. Got four locks so far. Um, these are the sisters, the super inchy orange dreams. Um, he's inchy orange dream pinstripe and uh, leopard. So um, what I'm trying to get out of both of these combos with him is this same exact thing um, with either Super Enchi or Super Orange Dream mixed into it. Um, he's only four genes, but he, his offspring could potentially be six. It could both be Super Enchi, Super Orange Dream, plus carry the Pinstripe and Leopard. Um, so I'm hoping he hits that in one of these two combos. There's a good chance that both of these girls breed with him. And if they do, I will be extremely happy. And hitting that, that ultimate combo snake would be great. Um, so these two, they are not locked up right now. It looks like they may have been recently because they're really close. Because when I checked on them yesterday, they were nowhere near each other. Um, but I'm going to move him over to my Sterling female who has, as far as I've seen, refused to breed and apparently she doesn't like us going in there either so hopefully they lock up at some point i stinks they haven't locked up yet but we'll see um next we have the ultramels and they're on complete opposite ends of the tub and they were yesterday as well which is not a good sign so i'm gonna move him to my pastel leopard female. And she's hugging the, the water bowl, so that's a fantastic sign too. So hopefully they start locking up pretty soon. They've had a couple locks the last couple weeks. Um, they actually did lock this last week, so I don't know what they're doing. These guys have locked several times too. <clears throat> And the last one is my leopard clown male and my pastel lesser pet clown female. And they have been here for pretty much the whole time, every time I checked yesterday. So he's gonna go to this next female. This is my pinstripe Enchi. And they actually have been, as of late, locking up. At first he was only locking up with the head clown, which was good. But now, uh, the last couple weeks, he's been locking up with her. So that's a fantastic sign as well. All right, so Minnie's tub is all cleaned up. She's ready to eat. And I got a nice juicy rat for her. Um, she kind of goes in between mediums and smalls. Um, depends how big the medium is. But this is, this is sort of like in between both of them. And she hasn't eaten in two weeks because she was shedding last week and did not want to eat. Um, let's see. She usually puts on a show. As soon as she picks up the scent, 
Let's see. She's got to be hungry because she had a huge rat uh, a couple weeks back. And I actually don't think she's eaten since then. So, let's see. She's not, she's not putting on a show today. Let's see. Come on. There it is. There. She got it. Get a good grip on that thing. All right. So that's it for today. Um, you, know, you got to see how I clean out her cage and I moved some of the males over. And now she is enjoying a nice fat meal for the week. Thanks for stopping by and please remember to like and subscribe. See you next time.